four hundred five pounds on the bar. It's starting to get a little heavy. I'm gonna go ahead and put my belt on. Now, I usually train beltless until about seventy eh, percent of my max. All right, real quick, somebody had asked me, like, how do I look up the powerlifting rankings to verify that I'm actually telling the truth? So I thought I'd show you guys real quick. If you go to uh, powerlifting rankings, and the first website is the powerlifting watch, open, you know, open powerlifting, and it's uh, all the records going back to, like, the 70s of all the federations. And you can quite simply go up to the upper uh, left-hand corner here and go to rankings, and then you can select, you know, your weight class. I'm 220. You can uh, then select, you know, male, female. You can then uh, go, I like to search uh, age groups by 10. Uh, they break it down for competition by groups of five, five years. But uh, I think 10 just kind of opens it up a little bit more. And then of course, all events uh, for me, because I compete full power. Now, DOTS is generally the accepted uh, scoring system. And as you can see, I'm right now number two in the world, all federations. I, I said I was one. I got bumped down, I guess. Now, if I go by McCulloch, which is DOTS with uh, an age modifier, it bumps me down a little. And I was looking at the number one guy, and he's a, he's a lightweight guy. Like, his numbers, his squats, uh, he's not even... Um, I think he doesn't even have a 1,500 pound total, but because he weighs so little, that he outranks me. That's crazy. Uh, so it's interesting if you because it goes by weight classes. Um, and you can go by you can search by total weight. So if you want to know who actually lifts the most, you can go by dot score. You can see who scored the highest. But it all uh, it all breaks down relatively within two or three of each other. So the scoring's fairly accurate. But you can look up any lifter, any anybody who says they compete, or anybody that uh, you know claims to have records. You can go to this website, and you can just plug their name in. Like think of a lifter right now and put his name in there, and it'll come up if he's competed and it's on record. It'll be on this website. <laughs> Here's a video of me way back in the day. This is the first time I deadlifted 600 pounds, and uh, it was on a flip phone. Man, I was going through my phone trying to find, or my video collection trying to find me back to when I was 100% natural, and I dug some of these up. Uh, you can see, like, the garage is clean. <laughs> I think we just moved into the house. Um, <laughs> it's like I just man I used to have the weight set right in the middle like it was back when I could actually like use my garage for air, a lot of other stuff I didn't have the I didn't have my floor covering and my punching bags uh, the workbench was set up on the other side and um, yeah, it's just it's amazing how much things change in such a short period of time and it's kind of funny to go back even just a couple of years just to see how how different or how quickly things can change, you know? Man, it takes me back. I was uh, right about, I think this is right when I just started making YouTube videos and uh, I was watching like the, the full video, like without me cutting it down. It was me like trying to explain how to do deadlifts and uh, the information's solid in it, but I just ramble on and on and on. It was like, uh, I had not yet connected with an audience or really, I was just, just learning how to make videos. Didn't know a thing about editing. Um, and they're kind of hard to watch. It's like, Jesus, even, I was like, get to the point, my man. You know, <laughs> like, really what I wanted to highlight is, you know, um, a lot of people, they, they have, everybody's got their opinions and they think of everybody that's on yeah, TRT or whatever, uh, they're on a bunch of drugs and there's no way that they could have obtained that physique unless they're on a, whatever and th honestly i'm not trying to convince those people otherwise this is more to, for the people that are serious and really want to know so you guys have used good information and as you can see i'm really not that m much smaller you know like size wise uh, i have a higher body fat percentage so i would the weight distribution or the body recompositioning would be a little bit higher fat percentage, a little bit lower the muscle. But I mean, roughly, I'm not. I mean, if you if you compare this 
to me right now, like the size difference isn't extraordinary. Um, and it's within 10 pounds probably, you know, so, and really what, th this is more to highlight what you can obtain naturally over the age of 40. It's totally possible with just, you know, doing five compound lifts. So, and, and I, I, I want people that are questioning whether or not they need to take performance enhancing drugs in order to get big. I want them to see this so that they, you understand you don't need to, absolutely don't need to. You know, so and then the reason, you know, the choices I've made are all personal and had to do with my quality of life. You know, everything from how I was feeling physically to depression to just motivation and all that stuff. But as far as like, if just building a good physique and getting strong, um, you, you just don't need to do it. And I, I want, uh, and that's for my younger brothers that are at, you know, I, I've been getting a lot, ever since I started doing live streaming, a lot of people have been asking me these questions. And um, the sentiment I get from a lot of young guys is they feel like they need to uh, use drugs in order to build a physique. And that's like, I don't want, I know, you don't, absolutely not. And don't do it. Don't do it before, this is my opinion, don't do it before you've attempted to try to, uh, you know, cultivate that for yourself naturally. And then, you know, once you've really put some solid training in and you start running into roadblocks, uh, and if, 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 then you can have that conversation, you know. And even then, it's still a conversation you need to have. I think like, it really comes down to is like, you really want to try to do as much research and talk to as many people and really dig in and find the good and the bad and the ugly and all of it before you make any kind of decision. Oh, there's so much just bad information out there and the conversation's so low resolution. It's, um, yeah, what, a lot of people that there's, it's hard to find anybody that will discuss it seriously. And, you know, it's a topic that, um, you know, obviously like, this is more like for educational purposes, um, <laughs> not to get off topic, but I still can't get over what my garage looks like. I'm looking at it. I'm like, wow. Uh, those deadlift platforms, I took, um, uh, plywood, three quarter, three eighths inch, three eighth inch plywood with a little bit of carpeting glued on top of them. And then, uh, two wooden strips on each side so that the weight doesn't roll back and forth. And I, I was wondering like, why did I stop using those? And, I, and what it is, is, uh, when you drop the weights, it starts to flatten the, uh, uh, the plywood over time. And then you get these grooves built into it and, uh. And even then, that's not an issue too much. I think what happens is the wood starts splintering. But I digress. I don't want to get off, off topic. <laughs> I just can't get over it watching these videos. Uh, but, he, you know, the bottom line is uh, it, whether, whether I use a lot, a little, none at all, whether I'm telling the truth or I'm a total liar, whatever the case is, uh, that all that's relevant because there's really no way. I mean, you know, there's no way for you to prove what, unless you go to the doctor with me and you see the printout, you watch me pee in the cup and you watch him take the blood. Like there's just no way to get a truthful answer out of somebody. And no, I know, I know for a fact that he's being a hundred percent honest. So it really comes down to like, do you trust the source of information? And since there is no way to be 100% certain, you got to, I encourage you to, you know, spread the love around, talk to as many people as possible and try to aggregate, you know, what, what is truthful. Um, that's exactly what I do. You know, uh, I have no way of knowing, you know, when I first started, I didn't know anything about it. And I was just at the mercy of the person that I was buying stuff from. And who knows what the hell, you know, if he's being honest or not. And I think like, uh, I started, for me, it was guys I was working out with, and I'd been training with them for a very long time, so I absolutely trusted these guys, but but then, it's not that I thought they were lying to me. I don't know where they got their information from, you know what I mean? I'm, 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 I was 100% certain that the people that were encouraging me to make these changes in my lives were being honest, but then it came down to where were they getting their information from, and luckily, 
like I said, like my wife is a microbiology student and she's going to UNLV and she's getting a pretty advanced degree and I have a background in chemistry so I knew, you know, both of us knew how to interpret research papers and um, you know, I worked with a doctor and a physical therapist and these are guys I train with, they do this professionally. So it's like we had good people that um, were in the medical field that we could bounce ideas off of and get good at least good anecdotal opinions and then of course uh, since I was training at Iron Addicts and I trained with uh, a lot of the uh, the arm wrestlers and some of the bodybuilders here in Vegas I was able to get their experiences and they were you know some of the, they would tell their horror stories the good and the bad and the ugly so it was easy for me to get uh, a good idea of what I was getting into but for the people on YouTube you know <clears throat> I want you guys to have the best possible information and uh, you know, I, the last thing you want to do is take some retard working out in his garage, his word for it. But, uh, you know, I really do my best to try to be as transparent as possible. I mean, I, I don't care personally you know, what anybody thinks. I'm going to do what I'm going to do regardless because I'm not doing it for YouTube. I'm doing it for me. I want those records and I'm not going to give up until I get them. So I'm on a mission, and that mission is like, it's outside of YouTube, or YouTube, you know what I mean? I had that before, and I, I have it now, and I'm going to pursue it to the bitter end, whether I'm making videos or not, you know what I mean? One of my goals is I want to be, you know, the, I love powerlifting so much. It's been a, such a huge part of my life, and it's changed my life in so many ways. You know, it's brought me around the United States. It's introduced me to a whole bunch of awesome people, uh, lifelong friends relationships uh every, the first competition i went to i was so scared i had no idea what i was getting into and i really didn't think that i was any good and i really wasn't i mean i, I was decent i had good numbers but like but none of that mattered they didn't care no they made me feel so welcome and it, it, was, it was real so come as you are kind of a community they were just more interested in your involvement in the sport I heard the same thing over and over again. It doesn't matter what your numbers are; they'll get better. You just, they just want you to to, to get bit by the bug and, and get the same passion they do. It's, it's um, almost got like it's almost cult like, you know. Uh, it's a bunch of misfits. Uh, powerlifting is just a bunch of. It was all the kids that were picked on in high school. All the nerds, all the Dungeons and Dragons people, all the, you know, the chess club, the art club, the weirdos, you know, the people that just couldn't find a place to quite fit in so we all just be found a corner of the gym and became monsters you know <laughs> and so much love so much love i just love it oh man but more to that you know when i got on youtube and i made my channel um i found out the hard way that uh youtube kind of categorizes you by who you interact with and what I, what I see happening with a lot of small channels, new people, is they get trapped in these bubbles. Um, you, you start talking to people, and then you talk to their friends, and you know, next thing you know, you got this little um, group of people that interact with each other, and it seems like um, it's hard to break out of that. Uh, it, it, and the reason I bring that up is because I see a lot of small channels that are relatively new and. They're going through some of the same things I went through when I first started my channel. And uh, it, it, it can feel like when you only have a couple hundred subscribers and you get the same 20 people coming to your channel all the time. Uh, and half of them are maybe picking at you, making fun of you, trying to see how thick your skin is and see if you're, you know, one of those people that reacts. And if you're new to YouTube and you're not used to how venomous people online can be, it... Uh, you can make the mistake of reacting, and then then they just, it's like, uh, I, know, I watch my chickens, and here's what I noticed. When one of them gets an injury, like say they're bleeding a little bit, the other chickens will just start picking at it. And next thing you know, they'll just shred them apart. It's crazy. So you got to see, if you have an injured chicken, you got you to gotta grab them and get them away from them. They'll tear them apart. And it's like that with you two. You, you know, it's like sharks smelling blood in the water. If you, uh, you show any kind of like a, emotional reaction or feelings it's just oh lord in mercy that come after you <laughs> so it, uh, it helps to have thick skin but like you learn that the hard way you know what i mean 
Uh, one thing YouTube's taught me is not to take myself too seriously. It's really taught me to be able to laugh at myself. And, uh, you know, because one thing I, I, I look at, I'm, I'm, we're all ridiculous, you know? A bunch of big meatheads, you know? <laughs> Just wearing next to nothing. <laughs> it's like, uh, if you can't laugh at that, but, uh, you know, it, 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 it is truly comical. And um, learning to laugh at myself and not take myself too seriously is also... Um, brought me good friends you know i've met a lot of you guys online and i would consider you friends and we you know some of you have died. i've actually gotten to meet in real life and we you know we've traveled and we've met up with each other and uh some of you i haven't met but i was able to get some of you to compete and you, you've done really well for yourselves and now you've like transcended that and you're on your own journeys and uh i was glad to be a part of that and um and a lot of you have impacted my program and helped me to be the best I could be so um, while you don't want to replace your real life relationships with online you can still you know there's still real relationships there's still people that you can wind up being friends with for a very long time and it's just as genuine as the people that you meet and interact with in your real life and sometimes you even get closer to those people in certain circumstances you know, so it's nothing I take lightly, and uh, I just feel honored and privileged that uh, for whatever reason, these last uh, few weeks, this last month, and you guys have seen through, um, I've gotten get good feedback that you like the content that I'm putting forward, and uh, and it, it, I, it's kind of um, reinvigorated me, and it's uh, re-energized me, and it's like, uh, I, for a while... After this last competition, I don't really know if I voiced it or not, but I was kind of considering, you know, hanging it up, but now I still, I want to keep going, you know what I mean? I'm not done yet, and um, I want to thank you guys for that, yeah, absolutely. And on that note, I need to get my butt going, because it's time to go to work. It's very a.m. Construction, we start early, baby. Gotta get after it. I love you guys. I'll see you on the battlefield.